Ladies and gentlemen, Sophie and David Buskin. In these evil days, with the body politic in tatters, where everything that really matters is buried under the crap. I've been doing this for uh, a, a long time. You know, I started in high school. Well, I got into folk music because it was that moment, you know, in the, in the late 50s when it looked like folk music was going to sit astride the world for the foreseeable future. <laughs> Sorry, very serious. <laughs> You're all living in Flint and feeling the full blast of the passionate intensity, the worst of lately worn. The same impulse that got me into folk music back in the 60s mm. is still in there waiting and, and now this is a very political time that we live in and it seems you know kind of vacuous not to be saying something about it. having all these strong yeah. feelings and having music as a mode of expression not to join the two of them together you know would be, would be a waste of time and energy when poisoning is more than metaphor and bitter men are all vendetta for the little we have gained you see it all the time and then we used to go down to washington square uh, on Sunday afternoons and the fountain was emptied out, fortunately, and there'd be like 500 people in little knots of four and five singing, you know, Sloop John B and stuff like that there. That sounds so great. That's not the New York I grew up in. Oh, no, it got different. It got a little, got a little different. A little bit, right? This song is called Mountains. I wrote it. Uh, I went on a month-long hiking trip last summer, and this is what I learned. Well, you taught, like, I haven't, I mean, I went to music school, I, all my friends are musicians, but I didn't really write music until we started this project. Packed up, went to see where I went wrong. Everyone said that I was crazy. When I heard that song, I said, I, I, that was another level in my appreciation of your ability as a writer. Thanks, Dad. Said, Holy cow. That's not, she's not only a songwriter, she's a good songwriter. Everyone has their thing. I didn't know mine. Could be me, but I knew if I didn't go, I'd never know that there's more to life than I can see. Also, that whole trip made me not afraid, not afraid of being who I am and saying what I have to say. Because, like, worst comes to worst, someone doesn't this, like it. I rest my case. I finally learned after 50 years of doing this. If you want. The perfect partner, grow your own. <laughs> I would say for the most part, we try and keep things. It's a, it's a um, what, what would you call it, Dad? I think you want to find the balance between serious message and very, very sophisticated humor. Yeah, that, that's really... That's it, you did it. pretty much what I think. Life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got this. <laughs>